Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at one of my favorite filming spot locations because guess what? We have that one crossover SUV that really has surprised a lot of people. It's this one right here. What is it? It's a 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross. This is the Corolla Cross Hybrid. But before we get into this all-wheel drive, maximum fuel efficient crossover SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Toyota. They've been making a lot of changes and they've been bringing more electrification to their lineup. Now, it may, may not be in the form of pure BEVs, battery electric vehicles, but Toyota, I think, does it the smart way by bringing hybrid and plug-in electric hybrid technology to their lineup. Now, what's fascinating is a lot of people, including yours truly, was surprised when they came out with the Corolla Cross because a Corolla is a compact sedan. They already have the RAV4 hybrid. So what I want to find out is if you're looking for a very fuel efficient vehicle, but you're also looking to not break the bank, is the Corolla Cross hybrid the way to go over one of the vehicles in their own lineup, the RAV4 hybrid? So let's go ahead. Let's dive into this Corolla Cross hybrid and find out. Right off the bat, the style. I really like the style of the Corolla Cross over the RAV4. And the RAV4, we have to give it its due. It's, it's, it's ready for a redesign. It's been around since 2019. This, though, is fresh right out of the design studio. So what we have up front, you'll see the larger style to the headlight housing. But the nice thing is, if you look on the interior, everything is LED turn signals your daytime running lamp, and your LED projector beam headlight. I like the way they bring this silver trim up top. It makes it really flow nicely into that fender. And then as we work our way down, because this is an XSE trim, you'll notice that we have LED fog lamps. Nice traditional round LED fog lamp. Just gives it that little extra touch. Now, as we come across that front grill area, what's kind of cool about the Corolla Cross, you have a blacked out Toyota badge. Very rare to see these on their other vehicles. I like the little bit of gloss black that they put around the exterior of the grill. And then you have that traditional large opening grill area, flat black, and a nice large lower lip that's also flat black. So if you're comparing this to the RAV4, RAV4 has a lot more gloss black. And I don't know, there's just something about the style that just, I. I like this one a little bit more over the RAV4. Now, as you rise up, clean, simple, that's all you need. No crazy origami kind of folds. The RAV4 is a little bit larger. And that's the kind of thing that's interesting is that this actually falls right in this gray area between subcompact and compact crossover SUVs, whereas the RAV4 is purely a compact crossover SUV. So it's a little bit larger. The hood is a little bit taller compared to this Corolla Cross Hybrid. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? That traditional style of wheel from Toyota where you have machined aluminum with the gloss painted, painted black. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of the wheel? 18 inch wheel on this hybrid equipped setup. What I do like, which normally, I don't normally say this, is I'm not minding the flat black around the fender openings. The reason why is if you look at the RAV4 hybrid, you have a lot of that gloss black around the fender openings. The flat black, it's simple. I mean, if they painted it the same color, this acid green color, I wouldn't mind. But let me know in the comment section how you feel about the flat black compared to say maybe a gloss black. But 18 inch wheel, and if you're wondering what's the size of the tire, 255 on the width, and a nice 50 series sidewall. And because this is an XSE, that's a sporty trim in their lineup. It does have some sporty tuning to the suspension. Nothing too crazy though. Now, as we come down the side, you do have gloss black on the mirror caps, LED turn singles. And of course you're gonna have that two-tone style with the acid green color and the black roof. I'm gonna have Steven zoom in. There's an Easter egg right there. You see that design? with those shapes. As Steven backs away, let me show you. That's actually the 
napkin drawing of the design of this car. So if you notice, up front you have this indentation. That's the front part of the vehicle on that design, and I, that's one of the reasons why I like this over the RAV4. And then the other part is going to be on the back portion. Same type of thing going on, but from the side of the vehicle, you can see this is just a little bit smaller than the RAV4. You do have standard size sunroof, and I like the way they paint the whole roof black, just everything painted black with the two-tone. Some bright, shiny metalwork, but the nice thing is it's only along the top, and I like when you get to the butter knife edge, it says Corolla Cross stamped in there. But really, my favorite part of the style from the side are the indentations. The big zonk is that right there. Why do we have an all-wheel drive badge down on the passenger side door? That, to me, it just, I don't know, it sticks out like a pimple, and I want to get Dr. Pimple Popper to just pop that thing and just squirt pus everywhere. It's kind of gross. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh well, we'll continue. All-wheel drive, so power obviously coming for the rear wheels. And then when you get to the back, it's simple and clean. Yes, it's got a rear wiper. No, I'm not going to zonk it, just because of the price point that we're talking about. And if you notice the design here, there's nowhere to put the wiper. So this one gets a pass. You'll notice LED lighting, which is great. XSE hybrid, and I like the way they blacked everything out on the back. And then of course Corolla Cross, and then as we come all the way down, flat black with just a little splattering of gloss black. No fake vents, nothing like that. Just simple and clean from start to finish. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this Corolla Cross. All right guys, we got the hood popped open. You do have a prop rod. Before we peek underneath the hood, we do have to mention a correction here. The tires are not 255 on the width, they're 225 on the width. So thank you, Stephen, for pointing out that correction. Now we could all be perfect in Stephen's world. But underneath the hood, what do we have? We have a two liter inline four naturally aspirated engine, and it's paired, remember, with that E all wheel drive electric motor powering the rear wheels. So what do we have? We have combined 196 horsepower, you have 139 pound-feet of torque from the two-liter inline four, and then of course you have 152 pound-feet of torque from the rear electric motor. Zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds, and then here's really where you're going to be the winner. You're looking at MPG in the city, 45 miles per gallon. 38 on the highway gives us 42 miles per gallon combined on this setup. And then of course we do have that CVT transmission and the vehicle weighs 3,424 pounds. But unbelievable, and this is why I have to applaud Toyota because of the crazy mileage that they're getting out of something like this. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire it up and see it roll. All right, guys, we're inside this 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. We're doing a little bit of mano e mano, a little in-family comparison competition between this and the slightly bigger brother, the RAV4 Hybrid. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, how much is a RAV4 Hybrid? Well, if you're comparing trims, a similar trim for a RAV4 Hybrid is going to run you MSRP right under $42,000. If you're wondering how much the MSRP is on this, which remember, the XSE is the top trim for the Corolla Cross Hybrid. This one, the way you see it, has an MSRP of $35,000. So we're looking at a six, almost $7,000 difference between the two. That's a big chunk of change. Let's see what the differences are. To the door panels, you're gonna see that familiar style from the Corolla. Soft touch everywhere. I like the way everything is just dark material. Easy to keep clean. No gloss black anywhere. A little bit of silver, 
just to kind of sparkle things up. Door pocket is a little small, but you could still get, I would say a, a quarter pounder. Don't get a double quarter pounder, just a single quarter pounder with cheese and a nice large uh, Mountain Dew to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. Toyota Corolla, which makes sense because this is a Corolla Cross. Soft touch, the simulated stitching. We have the JBL sound system. A little bit of gloss black, but nothing too crazy. And then you have your standard eight inch infotainment system. The great news is it's the updated multimedia. So of course you're gonna have your Sirius XM. You got your navigation. We hit the little car. We could see the power flow. And then of course you could get into your trip information. All those goodies, really nice. Plus you could set up the driver profiles which is another nice touch. Let me throw it in reverse. Backup camera takes up all eight inches, which is great. And I like the clarity trajectory, which is really nice. Right back into park and that's where we started. Technically, this is where we started, but there we go. Working our way down, you have dual climate control, that silver touch on the buttons and the switch gear. I could sync it very easily. We do have two stages of heated seats for both seats up front, USB-C, wireless charging, drive modes, which I'll show you that when you come to the business end. And then this is gonna control that CVT transmission, which remember, Toyota CVTs are different because they actually have a gear for first. The rest is the, the belts and the chains. The gloss black, similar exactly to what you find in a Corolla. Two cup holders. There's your Corolla cross key fob. Simple, nothing to it. I like the soft material with the stitching. Open it up. You do have a 12 volt, a USB-C, and you have enough room in here, I would say for seven of those old school Casio calculators. Remember those? They were solar powered. You thought they were so neat. Now everything's in your damn phone. I remember the days you used to have a calculator to calculate. You used to have a camera to take photos, a phone to make phone calls. Now everything is all together. Mind blowing. Seats, soft text material. Love the grippy cloth in the center. Manual seat controls for the passenger, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the good news is I have power seat controls for the driver. Standard size sunroof, which is nice, and I like the black headliner. Thank God they didn't put a tan headliner in here. But why don't you get your butt over here? I want to show you behind the wheel in this Corolla Cross. All right, guys, inside the business end of this Corolla Cross, I do like the all-weather floor mats with the Corolla Cross name down there. That's worth easily an additional five horsepower. You got your seat controls, easy to get to. Like I said, power assist for the driver. I'm six feet tall, and there's tons of room in here. They did a great job with space. Not with outer space, but just space in here for you and your passengers, maybe your stuff. Steering wheel, same exact steering wheel out of any other Toyota, whether it's a RAV4, a Corolla, maybe not the Supra or GR Corolla, but that's different. Nothing wrong with that. Flat black on all the switch gear. You do have paddles for simulated gears. If you want to use the paddles, it is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. The one zonk I have is I hate the horn button. It's just, I don't know, it looks, looks dated. I wish they would do something a little different with that because look at the nice digital display. You have an eight inch digital display, lots of different information and readouts that you could scroll through, a whole cornucopia of information. Of course, you're gonna have the Toyota Sensing 3.0 safety technology. Everything else, super clean. The one thing it does not have, which maybe it should for 35,000, is a head up display. But other than that, it's a very familiar place to be in. Why don't we get into the back seat area and see if your passengers are gonna like this Corolla Cross over the competition. All right, guys, back seat time. And here's another area where they were able to do a pretty good job of getting extra space, especially headroom for your passengers. The back is a little tight, but nothing that's too, too crazy. You do have AC vents for the back seat passengers, which is a really nice touch, and two USB-Cs. Pull this bad boy down. They do Charmin Soft center armrest with the two cup holders and you have the same design as the seats up front which isn't always the case i know that may sound strange the one thing i don't like is for the back seat passengers they made this part of the door panel hard plastic which that's a zonk but you have a large pocket here for easily i would say 
for Annie Ann's pretzels. Mmm. Nice hot fresh pretzel. Some salt. Some mustard to dip it in. Do you like to dip your pretzels in mustard? Let me know down in the comment section. Steven is anti-mustard. He'd rather dip it in ketchup or something, which is kind of weird, but that's Steven. But why don't we go ahead, while you're letting me know whether you like mustard or you're weird like Steven and want ketchup, we're gonna get in that cargo area and see how much space we have in this Corolla Cross. All right guys, cargo area time and this Corolla Cross is gonna surprise you. Hit the button, you got nice electric release, comes up, another one of those Easter eggs. There's that napkin drawing, that sketch of the Corolla Cross design. And then check this out, over 21 cubic feet of space in the cargo area. I like the way we have the JBL subwoofer. You have some slots here where you could put your packages of Twinkies. And then if you're wondering what's in that fancy Toyota bag, this pouch, this is actually the cargo net that you can lock down all your groceries. The one zonk is there's no spare. So something to think about. Seats do fold down 60-40 on the split. And then of course you have that nice, I like the way it's, it's got a nice hard surface to the security shade. Let's see if I could successfully lock it in. There we go. So people aren't peeping and creeping at all your groceries or maybe you went to one of those stores where you have to be an adult to go in to them. Nobody will see what you're, what you're buying. But the great news is you hit the button, comes back down. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go see how far we could drive on a tank of gas in this hybrid Corolla Cross. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Toyota Corolla Cross. I think the nice thing that I like about the Corolla Cross, even the RAV4 Hybrid, is they do a really good job of when the internal combustion engine shuts off and is just running off the electric motor. That, to me, uh, really is showing how Toyota has so much experience with electrification in hybrids. Getting to the eight inch infotainment system screen as well within reach. And what's also really nice as well is that yes, compared to some of the competitors, maybe it doesn't have the latest and greatest tech. It does have the up updated multimedia system. It does have a nice digital gauge cluster. And Toyota does a great job laying out their interiors to where it's just very familiar. Now going down the road, there is a bit of wind no noise and road noise. Uh, but I think at this price point, that is to be expected. But still doing a good job. I, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable in the Corolla Cross than I do in the RAV4 hybrid. And I think just because the Corolla interior, whether you're in a sedan or this Corolla Cross, is just done really, really well. But getting to the infotainment system is well within reach. And then of course, everything else is laid out super well. Your dual climate control, you do have your different drive modes, three of them, nothing too crazy, sport, normal, and eco. And the fact that we can get in the city, 45 miles of the gallon is mind blowing. But going down the road, you got your blind spot monitoring, your lane keep assist, all those goodies to keep you and your family safe. Visibility is excellent. And they put a really large side mirror on this vehicle, but it doesn't look so big from the outside. Kind of crazy like that. Even looking out the back, I'm telling you, they did a great job closing out those blind spots. Of course, we can go into our infotainment system and see that energy flow. Right now it's all about front wheel drive, but when you go on throttle, that's when that rear e-motor kicks in and we're rocking and rolling all wheel drive. But remember, all Corolla Cross hybrids, no matter if you get this top XSE trim or one of the other trims, they come all wheel drive standard just like the RAV4 hybrid comes all-wheel drive standard. And the RAV4 hybrid's EV setup is the same, where it has an E all-wheel drive out the back. I think the biggest difference is you get a little bit more power. Not a whole lot, a little bit more, because they use a 2.5 liter inline four. Remember, this uses a two liter inline four. But still a, a great environment to be in because with well over 400 miles worth of range on a tank 
of gas, that's really substantial in this vehicle. Because we're not talking about some little small crossover. It still has some nice proportions and definitely the style I prefer over the RAV4. But really, if you're looking for a versatile crossover SUV that is gonna give you the fuel economy, this seems to be one of the top choices because you're not gonna get as good a fuel economy with the RAV4 hybrid. You're obviously gonna have to pay more for the RAV4 hybrid. And like I said, I know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but uh, from a styling standpoint, I'm digging the Corolla Cross just that much more. The good news is, is when you're driving down the road, you do have the ability to merge and change lanes very easily. You have just enough power. And you'll see, like if I wanna change lanes, on throttle, all wheel drive kicks in and we can change the lane and get out of our own way. So that's the good news is, you have just enough power to get out of your own way. Yes, the RAV4 has around 208 horsepower, but still this, even though it's a little less than 200, is still just fine for those daily commutes. But hopefully this has been a good overall review of what the RAV4, excuse me, RAV4, I'm getting confused now, what the Corolla Cross Hybrid is bringing for the money. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day with this Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. Definitely want to thank everybody at Toyota USA for allowing access us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Is it worth the extra do re mi to get a RAV4 Hybrid? Or are you thinking that this Corolla Cross is the way to go for that fuel efficiency, for that value? Let me know down in the comment section. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rice family. Of course, we need to give it up. The flood man, he's bringing the rain. He's bringing the water. Thankfully, we have some sunshine today. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do and your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.